Hi everyone and welcome back. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Galia Kastner and I'm a violinist at the Colburn Conservatory of Music and I'm finishing up my master's degree. Today we're going to be talking about my injury journey. This has been a topic that I've talked about on my Instagram and it has been highly requested to speak about it, my experience with it, how I deal with it, and what I'm doing now to prevent the very first major problem that I had uh, back in 2017. Let's start with when I first experienced my injury. It was back in 2017. I was at the Aspen Music Festival um, and I had been doing a lot of playing. Basically a lot of orchestra, a lot of chamber music, a lot of gigs, and a lot of solo work. And I was still at the point where I was practicing around four to six, sometimes even seven hours a day, um, just depending on you know, if I had rehearsal that ate up three hours, if I had another rehearsal that ate up another couple hours, so that's five hours already. And then not having practiced my gig work or my solo work, I added another couple hours and that very easily adds up to seven hours a day. That summer, I had taken on way too much. I was definitely overbooking myself. Um, I was scrambling to, to get any gig I could because, you know, I was, I was really determined to make as much money as I could. At the same time, trying to get better at my own playing and, and practicing all the time. I'm sorry, by the way, if you can hear any noise in the background, it might be the air conditioner, it might be the dryer, we don't know. <laughs> so it was week three of the Aspen Music Festival and I was sitting front stand of Chamber Symphony with the LA Phil assistant concertmaster Bing Wong um, and Nick McGeehan was conducting the Bizet Symphony Number no. 1. If you know what the Bézet Symphony Number no. 1 is, uh, wow, good for you. <laughs> I did not know what it was, but if you do know, you would know that there are a lot of 16th notes. There are a lot of, it's a lot of right hand action. I do remember that I had two major gigs with a quartet that weekend, and I also was preparing the Vinyavsky Theme and Variations piece. If you know what that is, it's very, very hard and very technical, um, very, very heavy on the left and the right hand. I ended up, I think, hitting, I think one day I ended up hitting around eight hours a day. Uh, so that was three hours of orchestra, two hour rehearsal, and then I added an extra hour of my practice to get the Vinyevsky done that day. So the next day we had the concert. During the dress rehearsal, I wasn't feeling so good. My right arm was stiff, it just, with it, I had a hard time getting my hand to be very loose. Um, I was just kind of overall struggling, but I thought, you know what, it's probably because of yesterday, it's probably not a big deal. But then I got to the concert, and at the very end of the first half, I felt a very strange tingling sensation in my right thumb. Um, that's the bow hand. And I'd never felt it before, totally new, freaked me out completely, but it wasn't enough for me to be like, okay, I, I can still feel my thumb, I can still move my thumb, you know, it's probably just, again, from yesterday's practice. So we play the second half, which is the Bizet, and about one page into the symphony, I started losing all feeling in my right hand. It started in my thumb, and then it just kind of traveled all the way through and by the end of the piece, I was kind of holding my bow like this because <laughs> I couldn't move and I couldn't feel. I could not get through it and I was freaking out. So at the very end of the concert, I could not feel from my elbow to my hands. It was the weirdest and the most scary feeling in the world. The next day I went to uh, the doctor and they sent me to the physical therapist in Aspen. They didn't know what was going on. <laughs> I, th I sat in the chair and the doctor took one look at me and she was like, well, it kind of looks like a mix of tendonitis, carpal tunnel, and nerve damage, which is not three things you want to hear in one sentence. <laughs> And I just remember thinking, what? <laughs> and we believed it was coming from my neck or my shoulder. It was like a pinched nerve. We started working on um, some exercises to sort of gain some strength in my right hand back. If I wanted to get better as soon as I possibly could, I had to stop playing violin for 
at least a couple weeks. We did not know how my body was gonna react and how quickly it was gonna react to these stretches and exercises. I went home devastated. Um, it was the first time a doctor had told me, you cannot play at all. Don't play. <laughs> I went home feeling like a failure. You know, it, it was, for some reason, instead of thinking like, yes, I finally get like a couple weeks off, the first thing I thought was, I'm a failure. I messed this up for myself. I should have just been more efficient. I should have just cut down. I should have known this was gonna hurt me. I was out for about two and a half weeks, which is great because we were worried it was gonna take longer. So after two and a half weeks, I started to practice 15 minutes a day, only 15 minutes, only what I could handle. And if I started to feel anything, I had to stop. So that leads to what did I do to recover. I wanted to share some things that the PT in Aspen had told me, which I think really, really helped me. She said that the worst thing I could do was stress out. Because believe it or not, stress causes a lot of other problems. <laughs> you know, it doesn't want to improve if you're stressed out. If you're, you're not feeling great, you're not feeling good, your body's not going to want to get better. So, um, she told me to take walks. She told me to read books. She told me to go and enjoy other kinds of music and, and just enjoy my life and enjoy this time off. To take it as kind of a blessing in disguise and relax for the first time ever. I didn't have to play Vinyavsky theme and variations for two weeks and, and actually it was a great break. <laughs> Eating cleanly would help speed up the process. For those two weeks, I ate so healthily, lots of vegetables. She also said to drink a ton of water. I drank water constantly. Water solves a lot of problems. It really does. Finally, she told me to get a lot of rest. Your body heals itself faster, better when you rest well. I really need to take that advice now. <laughs> that really helped me. I went to bed at like 8 p.m. back then, and then I woke up at like as late as I could, and it worked. All of those things combined really, really worked. We were worried that I wasn't gonna be able to play for the rest of the summer. The next question I get on my Instagram is, did this change my practice routine after? And that's a big, big, big yes. That changed everything for me. It changed my philosophy and thinking about playing at least four to six hours a day. I had to learn this, you know, this was this was hard for me at the time because I was so used to just needing and wanting to play six to seven hours a day, you know. Um, but now we're at the point where if I did that, I would seriously hurt myself again. You know, once you have an injury like this, especially with nerves, this is something you deal with for the rest of your life. It doesn't go away. It's something that you have to manage and deal with and take care of every single day. I only practice around two to four hours now. And that's because, well, one, being in college, you know, things are a lot busier, <laughs> a lot more gigs, a lot more orchestra, a lot more playing in general. So my actual solo practice time has been cut down tremendously. I've had to learn how to practice efficiently and how to plan my practice ahead of time. Um, for a very, very, very long time, I kept a practice journal because it was so hard for me to just stop what I was doing, not continue the rest of the piece. Just, I really had to focus on that one part because I was hitting the three hour mark. I was starting to feel some pain in my back and my neck and my hands and boy, it was a nightmare. <laughs> I on and off now use a practice journal. Uh, like if I have a lot of repertoire, I use a practice journal. If you wanna see a video on how I uh, use my practice journal, leave a comment down below and I will, I'm, super, super happy to make that video. If I have an orchestra day, which is around two and a half to three hours of playing, I will limit my practice to an hour and a half to two hours. And it's not ideal, but that's, that's how I have to do things now. It's really, really important for me to mental practice, to listen to recordings, to record myself and then listen back to them, You know, which is why I started my Instagram, was to record myself, listen back, and find the problems, find the problem areas, find the out of tune notes. Where is my vibrato a little bit not even here? Because I was reckless about taking too much on and practicing too much, I, have come across this problem. On Thursday, I'm doing an Instagram live with my physical therapist, Janice Ying. Um, she is with Opus Therapy. I will put it somewhere on the screen here. 
Um, and we're going to answer all of your questions about pain related things that you might be feeling or if you had any questions for her um, that's what we're here for so uh, go follow me there um, and check it out when that happens I see Janice I think pretty much every week <laughs> because every week something new happens and a body part of mine is upset and she fixes me and it's wonderful I thought we lost the entire video there um, sweating so I had to take my <laughs> my uh, sweater off. So yeah, I just wanted to tell you guys about my story and hopefully there will be more videos to come about some stretches that I've learned and some advice that I might have um, if you're dealing with an injury, a chronic injury or chronic pain. Just remember that, you know, we musicians are also athletes. Our bodies are just as important as our instrument and our playing. So it's really, really important to take care of ourselves. And especially during this time, if you're watching this during COVID-19, this is the time to take care of ourselves and to really put ourselves first. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't, it would mean the world to me. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.